Peace family, it's Jay Morrison from the Jay Morrison Academy, Tulsa Real Estate Fund, United Africans in America. I also go by young Malcolm, not because I am Malcolm, but the spirit of Malcolm lives within me because I follow Malcolm's ideologies of fighting our political oppression, our economic exploitation, and our social degradation. And I'm all about reversing those, solving our, our issues as a community and fighting for justice, fighting for unity justice in the repair of our people, right? The self-repair that we need, the justice that we need and deserve, and the unity that we need in order to combat biasness, racism, bigotry, white supremacy, white supremacy, inequality, right? And I ask for people of all races, nationalities to stand with me like we did today here in Atlanta when we shut this down. This is Saturday night, 10 p.m in Buckhead, Atlanta, Georgia, the wealthiest section of Atlanta, and Houston's re restaurant is not getting any revenue because they discriminated against me and my team falsely. You can make your own assumptions and think I'm wrong because I know we don't like to empathize with the black or brown person. We want to empathize even with ourselves. We always want to think that, you know, none, we, nothing ever happens against us, right? We never want to admit the bigotry. We never want to admit that somebody discriminates against us. But factually, and on camera, we were discriminated against. And so I'm proud for, for, for Atlanta. I want to thank T.I. Tip, the King of the South, for coming here and standing with us, and uh, Queen Deb, my Queen Ernestine Johnson, and so many others that galvanized in one day. In one day on social media, we pulled our power, our resources together, our voices together, and we shut this ish down. We shut down Houston's Buckhead Linux Mall. We not done. We boycotting for life. We working with our legal team. We taking higher action. We went and shut down the Houston's on Peachtree. You cannot treat us unfairly. You cannot treat us and continue to treat us as a society, as from the US government to American corporations. You cannot treat us differently than you treat others in this same society. You don't treat us fairly. That's obvious. It's blatant. I asked a European Caucasian woman today about discrimination and if she thought if seven of her white friends went into this restaurant and they said we can't seat seven and her and her white friends said, you know what, we want to split up between two groups, four and three, you can't seat seven, no problem. We'll split up between four and three and we don't got to be in the same section, we don't got to have the same waiter and we don't need the same bill. I asked her as a white woman, do you think that they would turn you around and tell you guys to get out? or that you have to get out or walk back in? She said, you're worried about the wrong things. Did you even think about the shootings in Vegas? I said, why did you redirect? Why did you spin off what I just said? Just answer the question. See, the problem is with many black Americans and white Americans or Africans in America or Europeans in America, the problem is whenever we bring up our injustices, whenever we bring up our oppression, many people can't just answer the question straight out and flat and just say yes. You are right. You guys are treated unequally, unfairly, and have been for 450 years every year on year. Yes, you're right. What can we do about it? But instead, the racist-minded, white supremacy-minded, whitewash-minded, unjust, inequality-minded person, white or black or any other color, race, ethnicity, when you ask them that question about equality and they try to redirect it or spin it off into something else, that person is doing so because they have something to hide and they can't just be honest about the blatant bigotry, racism, biasness, inequality, and second class citizenship that happens to Africans in America. What a second class citizen is, is someone in a society who is not afforded the same fair share as others in that society. We seen it today during our protests. During our protests, a uh, white gentleman literally swung off on a black guy. The black guy blocked it and and our, our partner Nav, Nav Green, a comedian, let me have a short little funny comedian. Big white dude swung on him. The cops, the cops broke it up and put Nav, the black dude, in handcuffs. But we all seen it, we got it on camera. You might see it in this edit or another video. We saw the white dude be the aggressor and swing first. The cops pull the white dude to the side and start talking to him. White guy got his hands out, they talking to him. But the black dude is like this, the guy that got swung on is in cuffs. This happens so much in our society, and y'all know it's right. And I'm a, I, and listen, we not letting up. We're not gonna let you redirect us, spin us, and tire us out by avoiding our oppression, our injustice, and this biasness by you just being oblivious and neglectful. That shit not working no more. That 
that that that devilish deceitful tactic you guys use to try to not uh you can do it for the lgbt community you can do it for dogs and whales you can do it for the jewish community you can admit everybody's oppression everybody's injustice but you never admit the biasness that goes on within our community and this government and our slave masters children's and corporations irresponsibility to ever offer any kind of redress reconciliation reparation restitution or anything to help make us whole after all that we've been through helping to build this country into the wealthiest country in the world and so it's not just about houston's restaurant or hillstone's franchise they are an example and today we made an example of what our power looks like when we unify all we got to do is come together and bring our power together and we can shut all shit down shut down whatever we want yes sir jay mars is still here we shut this down tonight Houston's Buckhead ain't making no money tonight for discriminating against our people and it's just the beginning y'all this is a small example of what we can do when we stick together stop the infighting stop the hair splitting stop the bickering and yo come together empathize with your own people for once love your people enough to put your people first that's what brotherhood is that's what sisterhood is do something that makes Malcolm proud that makes Martin proud that makes Marcus proud Stop trying to appease your oppressor or your slave master's former children. Your former slave master's children. Stop trying to appease them. And think to appease your people, the unrepaired, the ones they left hanging. That's where your heart should empathize with and sympathize with first is your people. And someone who's not black or brown, you should be empathizing with the people who are least amongst us. The people are who have not been repaired who have statistically and habitually and generationally been abused and traumatized. Factually, why don't you of another nationality, ethnicity, or race tap into the human side, the human race, the human heart, and know that as wrong was happening to black people and been happening to black people, and we all have a responsibility to stand up for it. Today, in Atlanta, Georgia, in Buckhead, Houston's restaurant for their blatant discrimination yesterday, and one day we shut this shit down and will continue to flex what our power looks like when unified, when we are disrespected, we are not respected, we are discriminated against, when you are not treating us as you treat others in this same society. All you gotta ask yourself is that if what happened to that black man or woman, if that were a white man or woman, honestly, of course anybody can say anything, right? We all gotta, but honestly, moral, morally sounded, sound mind, if that were a white person, would that happen? And Jane Elliott said it best. She was in a room full of Caucasians, European Americans, white people. And she said, would any of you white people trade places with a black person? Not one person could raise their hand. If we were equal, if it really wasn't any issue, everyone said, yeah, I'll trade places with anybody. Who gives a shit? We're all equal. Like, no, like, like, like you can't beat the truth. You can't hide from the truth. Darkness will all, light will always overshine darkness. So there's no point in running from it. You guys have took your time and, and, and spread it out long enough, but we're here now. God gave us social media to unify us, to put these messages out there, to galvanize us, us, us faster. We're not in the times of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and other leaders where they have to go word by mouth and telegram. Right now we can unify much faster and it's our time. We have God on our side. As God's original people, the first people ever made on this planet, Historically, factually, statistically, we're African people, melanated black people. God chose us first for a reason. We don't act as better than anyone or treat anyone as less than because of that, because we know the last shall be first. But what we do understand is that God does have a special task and calling for us. I believe that. I don't think anyone's less than me because I have melanin and they don't, or because God made our people first. But what I do understand is that we are spirit when we're spiritually aligned with God. He's fighting this battle for us. We are not by ourselves. He has been with our ancestors. He's with us to this day. And it is our time. And it's a time for the human race to come together, but we cannot come together until you acknowledge the faults and the lack of repair for those you most oppressed. There will never be unity until there is redress, until there is justice, until there is restitution. 
At the same time, us as Africans in America, as black people, have to work on ourselves, have self-accountability to build up ourselves and do for ourselves what others will not do for us. And that's my message. Young Malcolm, I love y'all. Peace.